Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 4th of December. COVID vaccine may be ready in a few weeks, says Indian PM Modi at all party meet. US envoy Khalizad and Turkey stress need for support for Afghanistan peace process. And Bangladesh ships Rohingyas to remote island despite outcry. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said experts believe the wait for the COVID-19 vaccine will not be long, adding that it may be ready in a few weeks. Addressing an all-party meeting over the coronavirus situation in the country, Modi asserted India will start COVID vaccination as soon as scientists give the nod. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said India's vaccine against the novel coronavirus may be ready in next few weeks and the vaccination program in the country will be started as soon as scientists give note. Prime Minister Modi made the remarks while addressing an all-party meeting virtually with leaders of various political parties and top union ministers where he also asked the representatives of various parties to send their suggestions regarding COVID-19 in writing too. Modi asserted Indian scientists are very confident of succeeding in their endeavor of making the COVID vaccine. Bharat ki apni teen alag alag vaccine ka trial alag alag charno mein hai. Experts ye maan kar chal rahe hai ki ab corona ki vaccine ke liye bahut jyada intajar nahi karna padega. Maana ja raha hai ki agle kuch hapto mein कोरोना की वैक्सीन तैयार हो जाएगी जैसे ही वैज्ञानिकों की हरी झंडी मिलेगी भारत में टीकाकरण अभियान शुरू कर दिया जाएगा ऑन द प्राइस ऑफ द कोविड-19 वैक्सीन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सेड दैट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज इन टॉक्स विद द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स ओवर द प्राइस ऑफ द वैक्सीन एंड डिसीजन रिगार्डिंग इट विल बी टेकन कीपिंग पब्लिक हेल्थ एज टॉप मोस्ट प्रायोरिटी this comes as India's COVID-19 tally crossed the 9.5 million mark with over 139,000 deaths, while the Prime Minister himself is looking into COVID-19 vaccine development efforts. Thousands of protesting farmers on Friday continued to camp outside Indian capital New Delhi for the ninth day as they refused to budge until the new farms laws were repealed. A fifth round of talks between the government and 40 farmer unions over the farm's laws is expected to take place on Saturday. The farmers' protest entered the ninth day on Friday as thousands of farmers continued to camp outside Indian capital New Delhi, refusing to budge until the three new farm laws were repealed. The farmers, who form a powerful political constituency, fear the laws passed in September could see the government stop buying grains at guaranteed prices, leaving them at the mercy of private buyers despite assurance over it. Four rounds of talks between farmer leaders and the government have failed to break impasse and discussions are scheduled to take place again on December 5. वो लगातार आठ दिन से दिल्ली को घेरे हुए इस ठंड के मौसम में बैठा हुआ है तो प्रधानमंत्री मोदी इस डेड लोग का तुरंत कोई न कोई रास्ता निकाले और रास्ता एकमात्र बचा है तीनों काले कानून आपको वापस लेने पड़ेंगे और किसानों के हित में कार्य करना पड़ेगा Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government has defended the new laws and after Thursday's talks, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar again assured minimum support price will remain. The protests pose a crucial test for PM Modi's ability to reform India's vast agriculture sector.
which makes up nearly 15% of the country's $2.9 trillion economy and employs around half of its 1.3 billion people. The Reserve Bank of India kept key interest rates steady as widely expected on Friday amid persistently high inflation and after a better than expected reading on economic growth. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das said the economy was rebounding faster than expected from a coronavirus-induced slump earlier in the year, but warned signs of recovery were far from being broad-based. The Reserve Bank of India on Friday kept the repo rate unchanged at 4% and maintained the policy stance as accommodative. The RBI's Monetary Policy Committee made a unanimous decision to maintain status quo after a three-day meeting that began on December 2. The reverse repo rate also remains steady at 3.35%. The Monetary Policy Committee also decided to retain an accommodative policy stance at least for the current financial year and into the next year to revive growth on a durable basis, Governor Shakti Kanta Das said in an online briefing. The MPC voted unanimously to leave the policy repo rate unchanged at 4%. It also decided to continue with the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary, at least through the current financial year and into the next year, to revive growth on a durable basis and mitigate the impact of COVID-19, while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. Das said the economy was rebounding faster than expected from a coronavirus-induced lump earlier in the year, but warned signs of recovery were far from being broad-based. Moving on, the UN General Assembly held a two-day special session on the COVID-19 pandemic that began on Thursday, calling for solidarity and cooperation among member states in the fight against the pandemic. South Asian leaders who addressed the session in a pre-recorded statement called for urgent action to avert economic collapse, underlined the necessity of universal access to COVID-19 vaccines once they are available for use. A two-day special session of UN General Assembly began on Thursday, focusing on the response to COVID-19 and the best part to recovery from the pandemic, which has claimed 1.5 million lives and shattered economies. South Asian leaders, including Prime Ministers of Pakistan, Nepal and Bangladesh, joined nearly 100 world leaders on the first day of the two-day session. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, in a pre-recorded statement on Thursday, proposed a 10-point agenda for urgent action to avert economic collapse in a number of developed developing countries due to the COVID-19, warning that without economic security, conflicts and disputes would persist and proliferate across the world. If economic collapse is to be averted in a number of developing countries due to the COVID-19, the international community must identify and implement some key priority actions. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sought urgent global attention and further collaboration to defeat the pandemic as she placed a three-point proposal at the session. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli underlined the necessity of universal access to COVID-19 vaccines once they are available for use. We commend the initiative of COVAX to ensure access to vaccines to all the rich and poor. The world will not be safe from the pandemic unless universal coverage of vaccine is ensured. In South Asia, after coronavirus brought life to a standstill, the fear of a second wave is looming large. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. The U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation, Zalmay Khalizad, has said that he is heading back to the region to gather international support for the Afghan peace negotiations. Khalizad met Turkey's Deputy Foreign Minister in Ankara on Thursday, where they discussed the importance of continuous support to the peace process. He will also travel to Qatar. U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Zalmay Khalilzad met Turkey's Deputy Foreign Minister Sedar Onal in Ankara on Thursday, where they discussed the importance of continuous support to the Afghanistan peace process. 
Turkey's foreign ministry said on Twitter that in the meeting, they welcomed recent progress in Afghanistan peace negotiations and emphasized the importance of sustaining regional and international support for the peace process. Khalil Zad will also travel to Qatar where he will meet Afghan parties for discussions on Afghan peace negotiations. This comes a day after negotiators from both sides of the Afghan peace negotiations in Doha agreed on procedural rules for the peace negotiation talks. It's the first written agreement between the two sides in the conflict and is a big step toward moving on more substantive issues such as negotiations for a possible ceasefire. The peace negotiations between teams from the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban started on September 12. However, talks had been delayed because of disagreements over procedural rules. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said her country will never forget and forgive the brutalities committed by Pakistan in 1971 during its liberation war. Hasina made the comment during a rare meeting with Pakistani High Commissioner to Dhaka Imran Ahmad Siddiqui. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said that her country cannot forget the atrocities committed by Pakistan in 1971 during its liberation war, but assured she believes in regional cooperation too. Hasina made the comments during a rare meeting with the High Commissioner of Pakistan, Imran Ahmad Siddiqui, when he called on her at her official residence in Dhaka on Thursday. Pakistan in the 1948-1971 began a military crackdown on the Eastern Wing, now Bangladesh, to suppress Bengali calls for self-determination. Different bilateral and regional forums have remained inactive between Bangladesh and Pakistan for years now. But Islamabad is now seeking help from Dhaka to activate foreign office consultations between the two countries. More on news from Bangladesh. More than 1,600 Rohingya refugees were relocated to a remote island in the Bay of Bengal on Friday, despite concerns raised by human rights groups. The South Asian nation says this will ease chronic overcrowding in camps that are home to more than 1 million Rohingya, members of a Muslim minority who have fled neighboring Myanmar following a military crackdown. More than 1,600 Rohingya refugees sailed on Friday from Bangladesh's southern port of Chittagong for the remote island of Basanchar in the Bay of Bengal, a naval official said. The South Asian nation says it is only moving refugees who are willing to go and that this will ease chronic overcrowding in camps that are home to more than 1 million Rohingya, members of a Muslim minority who have fled neighboring Myanmar. But refugees and humanitarian workers say some of the Rohingya had been coerced into going to Basanchar, a flood-prone island that emerged from the sea 20 years ago. The naval officials said the Rohingya were aboard seven boats with two more carrying supplies under the watch of uniformed sailors. More than 730,000 Rohingya fled Myanmar in 2017 following a military-led crackdown that the United Nations said was executed with genocidal intent. Myanmar denies genocide and says its forces were targeting Rohingya militants who attacked police posts. A teacher from a village school in India praised for improving the education of girls has won this year's Global Teacher Prize worth a million US dollars. But he has already announced he will give away half of the prize money, sharing it with runners-up in the competition. Ranjit Singh Disley, a teacher from rural India who transformed the education of young girls at a primary school, won the Global Teacher Prize worth a million US dollars on Thursday. Disley from Paritewari in India's western Maharashtra state transformed the education of young girls at the primary level at the Zilla Parishad School by redesigning textbooks in the local language and embedding QR codes for easy access to the learning materials. During his acceptance speech, he announced he would share 50% of the prize money with the other finalists, meaning the other nine in the final round will each receive 55,000 US dollars. I would like to announce that the 50% of the prize money will be equally shared 
with the rest of nine top 10 finalists. Because I believe together we can make a difference and we can make this world a better place. The Global Teacher Prize, founded in 2015, is awarded to someone who has made an outstanding contribution to the teaching profession. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.